Two, three, and hello, fellows. Hero gone here. Today is Tuesday, July eleventh of two thousand twenty-three. Is now eight oh seven p.m. and boy, has last week been some times with us, with me and my family eating plenty of food. Of course, we had pr we had the typical stuff of ribs and mac and cheese and it, we even did a few fireworks af a day after so yeah that's a bit of the goods on my life and now that I think about it let's get into things I'm sorry if anyone thinks that I'm doing this unscripted because I am. That's the hard truth. If any of you are new to the Fun Log Friday slash Showcase Saturday stuff, you know that I do not make use of a script. So with that, let's get into things. This week's tutorial from Sean Lebro has us going for in-game currency part two. In, in particular, Sean goes over adding confirmation pop-up, a confirmation pop-up if you're purchasing items, assigning a price or cost to items in the shop, and some advanced menu navigation. Now with this part, here you will see here See that now you've got a chance to actually buy, or rather go the confirm, but no actual buying is implemented yet. It just shows you the confirmation pop-up, just as most games would tend to do. They either do this pop-up, or they have you try to hold the button down if you're wanting to, you know, buy something with in-game currency. So that's easy enough, right? I'm pretty sure a lot of people know plenty of games that do that. Whether you've played Super Smash Bros. or Mortal Kombat, it's, there's always some kind of confirmation thing that you've got to do with in-game currency. That way, you don't end up accidentally choosing the wrong thing that you wanted. Let me tell you, that is not really what I'd like to see. Now with regards to the C++ coding, it just simply had a new variable called currency cost, an integer variable. It has the typical old U property edit anywhere blueprint read write and the category equaling store. Now for those that don't know, the reason why I use the category thing here most of the time is just to give us some organization. After all, there are plenty of things that look a lot like the same. For instance, let's say that you've got player reference is as a category for P2 skin index, but you've also got another variable that doesn't have that category. So it can be pretty useful to organize a lot of this stuff right here. And that is actually all there is for the the coding. Just a simple variable added into the data structure of F unlockable item in the base game instance .h file. And .h stands for header file. And in the CPP file, or C++ file, there is nothing new. Now going into the blueprint side of things itself, now that we've added that value, we of course have it in our unlockable item data table which is a C++ code stuff. But I can make a new data table right around in miscellaneous 
and make use of a row structure, such as unlockable item. So yeah. And within unlockable item, the newest thing is the currency cost. So far, there hasn't been anything implemented to it just yet. It's just there to let you know how much the cost of a character can be. And with this, you can see for two characters, one of them I have the cost as 40, and another, Hell Shard, as 15. You can also see that I've also got one for one of the stages, being Alpha Centauri, and currency cost 10. Now these are just simple placeholder examples. You've, they've still got names, descriptions, and images used. Now going into the bits and pieces itself, the store item icon, store item configuration, and store widget are the main focuses. Now in the store widget, there's a few new parts, but before getting to that, we have a new widget called store item confirmation pop-up. This, tell, this asks us if we are sure we want to buy so-and-so. And we can choose yes to buy or no to go back to the store widget. Now in the graph, there's a few things. We've got our typical listen for input actions, move selection border, and move selection stuff. And our move selection border is the same. And clear past selection, in case that any of you didn't see the last few episodes, now clear selection is just one function, instead of me calling clear selection 1, 2, 3, 4, over and over. This clear selection custom event has a new input called button to clear that, tell, that tells clear selection to clear the selection of the button we want to have cleared. In this case, if the current P1 selection is not equal to zero, we clear the selection of the yes button. If not, we move to the next clear selection part, and so on, so forth, for as many buttons as there are. In regards to the widget itself, of course, we've also got get confirmation text for the text part. Pretty simple. Just have item name and item cost variables that will let us know how much the, the item costs and the name of the item. And using an append function, that way we can use these variables within the text part. Then doing a two text string. Easy enough. In store item icon, we have added the new part of the item cost as needed. Then in store widget there is a lot of things going around. And of course there's a, another part that involves the confirm selection. I almost forgot with store item confirmation. This relates to the store widget itself. We've got this variable called creator widget reference which is the store widget variable type. If we go if we select no or option 1, we remove from parent for the store item confirmation and start listening to actions. A new function we've got in the custom event as a custom event. It just has the same copied and pasted listen for input action part all connected to the callbacks. That is because when we want to uh, use the store item confirmation pop-up, we don't want any sort of input actions to be listened to. And of course, going into things, further down the line with our data get data table row, we break our unlockable item off, and now we have currency cost added to the set item details for the store item icon. 
and when we go into confirm selection, if our current selection in row is less than or equal to is that less than or equal to zero, if that is true, we go through the typical stuff of determine category button to focus and change category. If not, we determine item button to focus, which is pretty much the same as it's been. Then we create our store item confirmation pop-up widget with the exposed on sp create the expose on spawn parts for this little store item confirmation widget being around. Let's see. Hold on. Yeah. These two particular variables for item cost and item name are expose on spawn set to true. And then we set our creator widget reference to self, add to viewport with a Z order of one so it goes over everything, and finally stop listening for all input actions, which is in Unreal Engine by default. It's not any particular sort of function that I've made myself or Sean has made himself. It's in there by default. Use for for all those times that you want the widget to stop listening for any sort of input actions. And that is pretty much it for the parts on Blueprint. Now going into the game itself, we won't be doing gameplay, but instead we'll go to the store. So I can show you exactly how it goes. We've got going to Hell Shard. No function for the yes part just yet, but you can notice the are you sure you want to purchase Hell Shard for 15 tokens message. Then we press no, and of course we can do the same again. And boom, easy enough. And then we can go to another part, stages, same deal. Nothing for outfits and skins or game sayings with regards to stuff, but if you do go on a question mark one, it will just simply say, are you sure you want to purchase blank question mark for zero tokens? That's because nothing is set for that particular part yet. So yeah, and that is pretty much it for the fighting, I mean, Fun Log Friday slash Showcase Saturday improvements for the fighting game framework, or as I like to call it, the Bro Fight framework, as it's created by Sean the Bro using Unreal Engine 5, at least for my var variant of it. Sean is still using Unreal Engine 4 for purposes regarding GGPO rollback netcode from live been thinking, so yeah. And with that, that is pretty much it. Thanks again for stopping by. Credit goes to Sean the Bro for all of his tutorials. They've been amazing. And with all of that, I've been Hero Gun. You've been you. Thank you for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you guys tune back in next time. Goodbye, everyone, and have a hero-tastic day.